Our next speaker is okay. So when I read his bio on the website, I was like, "What's wrong with the guy? He's talking about uh, bears cloning by Albert Einstein's corpse." Uh, okay, but it was there and it's for you. I'm still trying to like understand that, and I'm not so sure that I will be able to. But what I'm sure about that he's a very smart guy. Um, he currently works for Automatic as a meta engineer, and today he will give us some insights about one of the most interesting and maybe discussed topics, and that's Gutenberg. So let's welcome Niki Bocinski. Morning. Um, since since I'm not super good with jokes, I'd like to just tell you a story. And to make things a lot more uh, adventurous, all, all, all of the story will, will happen from inside Good, Gutenberg. If you don't know, Gutenberg is the new editing experience for, for WordPress, aka is just the new ed editor. So, as I said, morning, I hope every, everybody's to walk it up a little bit. And the story today, j just as any other story, we'll, we'll start with once upon a time, right? It's how we write in an editor. And the story today is about a queen and a king. Let's put them next to each other. <laughs> it's the queen short. <laughs> yeah, this is queen short. Then it is king. Can you guess? Can somebody get, guess the name? Oh. Yes, uh, this is king code. So now I actually have two two uh, plot lines going at the same time. It will be the story of Queen Short and King Code, and the story about Gutenberg itself. As you will, as you will see me using it or at least trying to see. It, it was pretty easy to create a a two column lay layout, right? So. Back to the, back to the short code story. Of course, their their kingdom was called the short code kingdom, and they were very famous because they instituted something that is called the short code tax. Let's make it a heading because it was a very big tax. Everybody had to use those uh, those short codes. If you don't know about short codes. Uh, uh, they are text that you enter in, in your editor just to make some, something more special that is, that is not just text. And let me show you some short codes. For, for example, if, you wanted, if, if we wanted to do a column layout, first we had to use a plugin, and then we had to use some short codes. Let me copy something to make it easier. Also, we're going to use the classic block so that we don't mess things up. Here, here are some uh, short codes. See, it's not the, the nicest thing in the world. This is why this time was known as the Dark Ages. <laughs> yeah. And, but, but those ages to, to not look in incredibly dark. So let's try to make them dark. Them. Oh, it's, it tells me that, that the, the color combination may, may be hard for people to read. Let me choose another color for the text, yes. These are the actual dark ages. And obviously, it was totally unbearable. The people couldn't couldn't pay pay the tax. Websites were were totally messed up. And here was the savior. Oops. 
what is the Savior doing? The Savior was this guy, also known as Lord Page Builder. <laughs> you can see he is giving us a, the okay, he will make everything super easy. He's big. Everybody knows him already. He totally dethroned King Code and Queen Short. And let's get him a little bit colder look because he was as cold as that. Of course, on the surface he made everything easy. You, you could drag and drop things, columns, layouts, carousels, everything. But then, once you, once you try to escape from him, or, or you betray him in any way, he would be the cruelest person alive. Also, on the surface, he actually kept a lot of the mean structures of the, of the shortcode kingdom. Let me show you. This is actually a quote from, from Lord Page Builder. This is a deactivated Lord Page Builder. If you deactivate him, only, only short codes were, were, were left, and it was not pretty. Let, let us try and make it a little bit prettier at least. Quotes have, have, have even different styles. I don't like this one. But maybe I can, I, I, I can convert it to a full quote automatically. Yes, and make it white. Or maybe it Oops. Maybe I can make it red. Can I? Yes. Whoops. Okay. Hmm, it even saved us. So Lord Lord Page Builder also wasn't in incredibly nice. And of course, uh, there was a, a successor. It was Duke Page Builder. He was almost the same, but he had a different tint. And, and neither of them played, played, uh, uh, played super nice with anybody. If you were on, on their side, good. If you are not, you are totally dead, as, your, as was your uh, website. Hmm. So, what, what, what do we do? We obviously needed a break. We needed a page break. We need to uh, uh, do something different. We needed an experience where people could could discover their content, not like in short codes, where you had to read a ton of documentation to even know what kind of short codes exist, and, mo and most people just didn't know. What else did we need? We need a guide. We need something that we need an interface that actually guides the users. Again, in a short code, you need to remember a ton of attributes. Also, we need something that plays nice with everybody, either with other plugins, or even with just HTML itself, or with other editors, which are, which, which are not ours. And none of the, and neither Lord Page Builder nor Duke Page, Page Builder played nice with anybody. We need, we just needed a lot more power, both for users and for developers, but also 
for uh, the for designers who were totally neglected until this point. So, what do we do? Okay, let's see. Can I just try 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 to uh, uh, discover something here? See, with this plus sign, I can add a block. And I can search all of the blocks in the world. I may not find something today, but tomorrow I may. But let's try with something simple. A gallery. Oh, it actually tries to guide me how to, how to work with it. Hey, just, just drag images here or whatever. And let's see what, what actually ha happened next in the story. There is this guy, the CEO go going in production, <laughs> who recruited this other guy. And see, I can actually change, I can actually continue working with the, with the gallery from here. He recruited this other guy, Matthias, to work with him. And with a small team, initially. And tens and probably even hundreds of prototypes, something was born called Gutenberg. <laughs> also, Gut Gutenberg was a lot bigger than, than just them too. So, let's just make it a two-column gallery. And we can add even more if we want to. And Gutenberg actually, actually plays well with everybody. Even with this guy, if, if he wants to. Um, you can see how, let me show you. See, uh, this is the text. It's not short codes. It's not weird JSON or some developer talk. It's normal HTML. It plays like another editor can totally use this. And even if, let's say here, let's say our site uses a block which doesn't exist. Yep. Let's say it uses the funny mo mosquito block. And this is just text. Everybody can write this. But, but almost nobody has to. And let's switch to visual. See. Gutenberg is playing, is playing nice. Even though it, it doesn't recognize the content, it actually lets us edit it just as HTML. I can say key, keep as HTML, and then I may even convert all, all, all of those to small blocks. And now it's a normal paragraph where I can make the text huge. Because every note that strawberries and dogs create a, so much fun. <laughs> right. And you see, actually Gutenberg is all of those things. Um, it's actually a lot more. This is probably my, my uh, favorite part. That the, the possibilities are totally endless. I can probably show you my favorite features for, for another day, or at least another 10 or 15 minutes. <laughs> Uh, but I can do, for example, let's say that I want to do I want to do an alternative alternative history story, and I I I want to write totally different different story for the same king and queen. So I can select those two blocks, then create a reusable block called was, right? Then I save my draft. And I create a new post. And there, guess, I have once. Whoops, wrong one. The magic of the live demo. Here, once. And, and I get the exact same block. Also, I can actually edit it. And if I edit it in one place, let's say I want to drop cup here, because this is how all of the books start, right? I save here. I go to my other post which was the good morning one. And ta-da, it, it's changed here too. 
how many times you you wanted to share some content between between pages or posts or anything you can do well, you can do so much other fun stuff <coughs> You can embed almost anything you want to. You, you, you can very easily embed your favorite WordPress TV talk. Or you can even embed things just by pasting their URLs here. Uh, uh, this is a WordPress post. Or one of my really favorite things is that. You can you can have some markdown here. Can you see? Here is this markdown. It's like a recipe. And then if I paste, it's actually formatted correctly so so you can write all of your markdown if you're one of those developer people who really like mar markdown. And then just paste it here and it works perfectly. Actually, you can even paste things from this uh, Microsoft Word thing, and also it kind of works. Mm. And finally, um, I want to show you even more possibilities. Here is something that a colleague wrote in... Uh, no, I want to use a different block. There is a really cool block called media and text where you have media on the left which is super color he actually created this sketch uh, in 137 lines of code see what it does it it, it, it adds a block which, which just lets you draw and it saves it as an image in the media library <laughs> um, This is definitely my my uh, favorite thing about Gutenberg. It just, it just opens so many possibilities, like adding all of those blocks. Just in my everyday work, I, even on my first day of knowing about the idea of Gutenberg, I could think of so many, so so many ways to use it and so many ways to extend it. Um, I have already created a few blocks where we have templates and, and you can insert very, very specific things in different places. Um, and various plugins can just can 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 very easily create their uh, their their own blocks. We have been talking to, to people even from totally different projects like Drupal or Jira or even uh, or even Shopify about how all of those blocks can, can, can work in different places. Mm. It gives the designer so much power while, while, while keeping the experience for the user so easy. Um, people who know me know that I'm not very easily excited uh, and it, it may not really show, uh, but I actually am. <laughs> so yeah, thank you and let's Add another one. Questions. Let's make this big. While we wait for the first question. And thank you. Is there something in Gutenberg you're not excited about? <laughs> there are a lot of things I don't like. Like what? Um, probably the, the thing I hate the most is that if I, I can't uh, I can't press I can't indent with tab. <laughs> of course. <laughs> well, I'm a simple man. I have simple. Man. <laughs> is there anything a little bigger that you don't like? Like with more implications, let's say to like millions of people. <laughs> Nothing that probably won't be fixed soon. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the politically correct answer. <laughs> it was a very 
politically correct question. <laughs> <laughs> it's like this question. Thank you for that. Hi, yeah, my question is... Hello. How are you? Oh, hi, my name is Jackson. Oh, thanks. thanks. Uh, what are the limitations of Gutenberg? Like, um, uh, what would you, what kind of features would you, if you want to do them, you would have to go to a different page builder. You couldn't use this. I'm sure. I'm sure something like this exists, though I don't know of anything. Um, it it is definitely missing a lot of blocks still. Um, it will definitely take time until. All of the blocks created by by all of the page builders for for the past few few years are have have, have their Gutenberg versions. Uh, though in my ex ex experience, most of the page builders and and many many other people from from the community are very actively building blocks. But I, again, I must confess that it may take us some time to get to get there. Still, probably, Gutenberg has more market share than almost any other page builder right now, just because it's in core, and and we know that core is a big snowball. <laughs> once once things start spinning, uh, it would be very very hard to stop. And also, all, basically, all of the page builder teams are are right now working on. On making sure that, uh, their uh, their blocks work with uh, Gutenberg. Thank you. Hi. Uh, so first, uh, thank you for the great talk. Uh, my name is Danny, and uh, something which you mentioned during the talk was uh, that okay, so now we don't have this block, but it might be there in future. Mm -hmm. uh, does this mean that there's gonna there's gonna be some uh, com like uh, marketplace for blocks or some repo for box where everybody can actually input uh, or post their codes and so it could be reusable by other WordPress developers. I think you sort of uh, mentioned this during the previous answer, but I just want to make sure. Um, there is not a 100% firm decision on, on this, or at least I don't know about it, uh, but it, it would make so much sense for blocks to be in the plugin repository and for plugins to actually define, oh, uh, I'm giving you this block or, or that block. And actually, in, in the post, I just uh, tried to embed, there is this really cool prototype. I've seen it. Like, yeah, there is a prototype, let's say you search for contact form, and it says, oh, there are no blocks, but here are those few plugins that actually give you a block that, that says contact form. Uh, this would definitely happen. I'm not sure, probably it will, it, it will not be tomorrow. <laughs> uh, probably not even next week, but soon, sure. Um, he asked about the business perspective, and I'm absolutely sure people are even already working on it. Some people, I don't know who. Uh, but yeah, it sounds like a, like a very good business opportunity. You you already see those plugins with uh, collections of blocks, and I'm sure people will will figure out ways to just transmit. Or, or only the block part, or make or split pl plugins into very small parts so that they can sell them. Yeah, this is definitely coming. I don't know by whom, but yeah. uh, thank you. May, may I just start something? Uh, who is adding something? Hello. Yeah, yeah. Uh, actually, this thing already exists. Can't remember the name or the URL of the website, but it collects blocks. Absolutely usable for WordPress with Gutenberg or Drupal with Gutenberg. There. Okay. Uh, I want to ask you because I've read some articles that there are some issues regarding handling meta boxes. Uh, so, can you tell us how do you plan to handle it? Yeah, it currently handles most of the meta box use cases. Um, 
in order for, for things to work, to work really great, some plugins may need to do some extra work. Uh, but normal, but right now, it, they, I'm pretty sure that almost all of the cases work. I think there were some obscure cases where, where some plugins actually try to edit, try to filter a lot of the HTML around it. That, but I'm pretty sure that at least all of the big, all of the big ones are fixed. Mm. And to be honest, ideally, meta boxes would would be a totally different experience compared to to today. I don't want to tell people to change the way they work because habit is a great motivator or at least change is super hard. Uh, but in an ideal world, all of the meta boxes could be and, and all of the all of this meta information can very often be part of the editor itself. You can add you can add them just like you add a block. Uh, and there were and there were a ton of debates within the team whether whether a hundred percent backwards compat compatibility would, would even be would even be handled by Gutenberg, but I guess uh, in the end um, the the majority prevailed, which of course makes sense. Does this answer your question? Yeah. Great. Thank you. You have more questions. Oh. Okay. Hi, I'm Brecht. Uh, first and foremost, thanks for the uh, most creative take on a demo I've ever seen. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I have a little, a little question concerning the rollout of uh, Gutenberg. So we all know it's coming probably rather uh, soon. Um, now, by now, all of the, the bigger plugins and bigger uh, WordPress-oriented companies have already invested time and, and money in converting their, uh, their plugin to uh, have blocks to be uh, fully Gutenberg compatible, but is there a plan or an initi initiative coming from um, well the team behind Gutenberg to support the um, well the, the, the smaller devs, the, the end end user devs, hobby devs who also have plugins to help them make the push towards Gutenberg compatibility? Mm. There are a few things. Um, first, you know that everybody can, can use a, the, the classic editor. It may not be the best experience, but as I, as I said before, so many people are so used to it, it's not anybody's goal to just break their business or to break their workflows. Um, so if somebody cannot afford the change at this time, it's perfectly fine. Nobody will judge them if, if they continue using the, the classic editor. Um, in terms of smaller devs, it's one thing that, that was done and, it, and, and, and was a major um, goal throughout, uh, throughout de development is to keep the API surface as small as possible. Also, to not depend on uh, on a lot of external libraries, so that um, in Gutenberg uh, there is a version of like JavaScript frameworks which which have been greatly sim simplified to make it a little bit easier. I totally agree with you. It still takes some effort, probably a non-trivial effort, um, and. The other thing that I really hope ha happening is that the same way that for all of those like 15, 16 years, uh, the community has has taught each other how, how to do things in the best way for, for WordPress and for plugins, um, I really hope that the same thing will, will happen with uh, Gutenberg. It's probably, it probably requires like a little bit of level up from many people, or at least a lot of developers will need to learn something new. But also, learning is a muscle, and we as a community need to need to probably flex it more often. And 
looking looking back just by not changing anything all of those 15 16 years we actually may have done us our, ourselves some harm where oh ev everything needs to work so if i'm a developer why should i even even learn something new um, the way i see it is that WordPress uh, is that users actually will be the biggest push. When they come to you and say, hey, I really like this Gutenberg thing, can you make your plugin work, work cool with it? And if I'm not alone, probably this will be a sufficient motivation for any, for any developer to just learn something fun and new and contribute to a, to a, a better user experience for, for, for its customers. Cool, thanks. Do we have time for more questions? We have plenty of time and I have more questions. <laughs> Are you coming to the panel at all? Yeah, I might even be in it. Anyway, I wanted to ask you a little bit about the release cycle. Sure. Uh, and I know that it's, it's been quite a kind of hectic uh, update round, updates round. We're releasing on this date and then something happens and then the release that gets postponed. And uh, the releases once uh, this is in core are going to cause quite a quite a bit of um, you know uh, work <laughs> to be done. So, is there any clarity around whether or not um, the release cycles are going to get like even uh, more predictable? Anything like that, or can you share just a little bit more about the? Um, to be honest, I don't know. Um, the current plan after 5.0 is released is to continue for a lot of the team cur currently working on Gutenberg to work on just fixes because I'm sure there will be things to be cleaned up here, here, here and there. Um, at the same time, uh, a group of people will start working on the on the version two, which will be the bigger possibilities of Gutenberg getting out of the post. And, and allowing people to edit their page layout and their site layout and, their, and everything. Um, but to be honest, I don't know. Do you know what the plans are for the customizer? Are they going to coincide? Uh, what do you mean the customizer? The version two? Yeah. Um, to coincide with what? No, I meant the currently it's existing customizer in WordPress and Gutenberg, how are they going to kind of work together? I don't know. You don't know? Yeah. That's okay. <laughs> don't know everything, right? I, I do not. There's know. time for more questions. Wow. I got one. Nikki, Gutenberg finally is a page builder or is a page chaser? Yes. <laughs> yes, what? <laughs> it's everything. Uh, it's, it's everything you want it to be. <laughs> I, I couldn't resist it. Um, I don't, to be honest, myself, I don't make a big difference between the two. Um, it's a matter of semantics. You can build pages, you can, you can just edit stuff. If you don't use columns and layouts and fancy blocks, it will be just, just like a normal editor. Any more questions? Oh, I can actually see the people, nice. <laughs> Do we have any other questions? No. Okay, if that's everything, let's uh, give our round of applause for Nikki.